Hello friends, this video on air and water pollution part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we saw how dangerous air pollution can be, it can cause so many diseases in human beings, in animals, it can even kill many of them, it can also destroy plants, so basically it can destroy several life forms existing on earth. So now we should also find out ways to control air pollution because if it keeps on increasing in this way, then a day will be very near when no life will exist on earth. So let us see what are the various ways by which we can control air pollution. So one thing that we can do is filtration of industrial pollutants before being released into the atmosphere. So we saw that industrial emission is one of the major cause of air pollution because they release a lot of harmful substances into the atmosphere. So what we can do is all those substances which comes out of the industries. Now before they come out like this into the atmosphere, they should be filtered inside. So inside they should get filtered so that more toxic substances can be converted into less toxic substances and then those less toxic substances are released into the atmosphere. So that means at least the harmful effects will be reduced because at least the more toxic substances are not coming out of it. So that is one way. Now there are many devices which can be used to convert the more toxic to less toxic substances in, inside industries. So one such device is electrostatic precipitator which is also called as ESP. So this device is used to remove more harmful substances from the uh, from the smoke which comes out of the industries. Now in your higher classes you will learn about electrostatic precipitated and it's working in more detail. So this is one thing that can be done. The next thing that we should do is maintenance of automobiles to reduce pollutants emission. Now we saw that the emission from the automobiles they also contain a lot of harmful gases. Now, how these harmful gases are released? So, one important cause is the use of petrol or diesel in uh, automobiles as fuel because incomplete combustion of petrol and diesel lead to the release of carbon monoxide, which is very harmful. Now, quite a few things that can be done by us to maintain our automobiles better so that they do not release such harmful substances. So we will see what can be done with regards to automobiles. So in the next few slides, we will talk about automobile maintenance. Maintaining cleanliness. It is not only our duty to keep our house clean, but also to keep the entire locality and the entire planet clean. So we should stop emptying our dustbins on the road and make them dirty. So we should dispose of the solid wastes properly. We should also do proper segregation of wastes. For example, those waste materials which contain substances that can be recycled or reused, they can be put together. Similarly, those substances which are non-biodegradable, they should be put together. So that means we should segregate wastes properly and also dispose them properly at proper places. So cleanliness maintenance is another important thing that can be done. Say no to crackers. Now the Diwali time comes and it is not only on the day of Diwali that we burn crackers but almost 15 days around Diwali it's all crackers everywhere. And crackers not only create noise pollution but it also emits a lot of harmful substances when you burn them. So and as a result, those who have uh, problems of asthma or breathing, it becomes extremely dangerous for them. So that's why people suffering from asthma, they do not come out of their houses during such festivals. So we should say no to crackers because there are other ways of enjoying or celebrating a festival rather than causing air pollution and spoiling somebody's life. Noise reduction. Now, noise pollution is completely under our control. So if we want, we can reduce it completely. We can stop unnecessary honking on, of our vehicles on the road. We should stop playing loudspeakers at a, in a very large volume. We should also, uh, as I said, we should say no to crackers. Uh, we should not party late at night or we should not make a lot of noises near hospitals or schools. So these are some of the things that can be done from our end to reduce noise. 
proper disposal of wastes. Now, waste materials need to be disposed at the right place. Now, if we keep throwing or keep disposing wastes anywhere and everywhere, what happens is yeah, a, a big heap of waste materials get collected there. As a result, a lot of insects come there, a lot of microorganisms start breeding there. So, that particular area becomes a source of several diseases. So, proper disposal of wastes is very, very important. Alternative sources of energy besides fossil fuels. Because if you talk about fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, gas, so all these things, they actually lead to emission of lot of harmful gases. Like you saw carbon monoxide is one such example. Carbon dioxide is another example. So such gases are released by burning of fossil fuels. Now, if we depend on these fossil fuels completely for energy in that case we will not have another choice in that case we will have to compromise with our environment quality so that is why what we should do is we should try to find out other sources of energy also what kind of alternative sources for example solar energy for example wind energy or water energy which is also called hydro energy or hydropower so these are again some sources of energy which can be utilized for similar purposes as are fossil fuels. Like most of these fossil fuels, they are used for generation of electricity. So similarly, you can use, I mean, we make use of hydroelectric power stations where electricity is generated from water energy. Solar energy can also be utilized for several purposes. So we should try to minimize the use of fossil fuels. So, using alternative sources of energy is one option. The other option is we should, so the other way of minimizing the use of fossil fuels is by effectively utilizing the energy sources. Like we should not, in, we should not unnecessarily use energy sources. For example, let us say you have two options. One option is you can climb up the stairs and the other option is you can use a lift. So which one will consume less energy? Now, if you talk about your energy, so if you walk up the stairs, your energy will be consumed and you will remain fit. But if you make use of the lift, in that case, you are actually utilizing electricity. And every time you use electricity, you are actually utilizing, you are actually uh, causing the need for more energy resources. So the energy resources should be used wisely and it should be used only when needed. So unnecessary usage of energy resources should be avoided so that our need decreases, our need for using fossil fuels decreases. So if we can reduce that, we can also reduce a lot of air pollution which is caused due to burning of fossil fuels. So these are some of the measures which can be taken from our end to control air pollution. Now, when I say there are small, small things which we end up doing. For example, we often try to burn waste materials. Like when I was talking about proper disposal of wastes, I should have mentioned this as well, that we should always avoid burning of waste materials. Because when you burn it, you actually again end up releasing a lot of harmful gases. Instead, what can be done is at least the organic wastes, the organic wastes can be utilized to prepare manure. Manure are what? They are biofertilizers. That means the living or once living organisms, the waste materials, dead and decaying organisms, they can be decomposed for a very long period of time. And then they act as manure, which helps in improving the fertility of the soil and therefore helps in plant growth. So this is a useful way of utilizing the waste materials rather than just dumping them and inviting insects and disease causing organisms. So this is a better way of utilizing the organic wastes. So these are some of the things that can be done from our end to control air pollution. Now, as I was telling about some of the methods, for example, the filtration of industrial pollutants. So I was telling you, right, that we have quite a few filtration devices. One such common device is electrostatic precipitator. So what does this device do? 
it removes 99% of the particulate matter which comes out of the industries so you see 99% is all removed by this device so if this device is installed within the industry or the factory so we get rid of 99% of the particulate matter so only 1% remains so that 1% might come out with the industrial emission but at least if you compare it with the scenario when there is no electrostatic precipitator so it is far better than that at least the amount of uh, pollution which was being created before so now that has reduced at least so therefore, if you look at thermal power plants or industries, so if, if you just compare the industrial emission coming out of two industries, in the first case, it is without electrostatic precipitator. So what do you see? The emission is all black. It is full of the particulate matter, smoke, harmful gases. In the second case, it is with ESP. So electrostatic precipitator has actually removed a lot of particulate matter so the so the emission which comes out of it is comparatively a lot lot clean so which one will be preferred this or this definitely this one and not this one so that is why it is very very important to install electrostatic precipitators or similar devices in industries and factories so that we can reduce the harm caused by the industrial emissions Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.